Hello friends. This is Anime Reality Bender how are you all? So in this video, we will see. What if Naruto awakened with the power of Dragon God? Dragon God of the Grand Line. But before we start, if you want more amazing stuff like this, then be sure to subscribe to our channel and like this video. Also if possible share this video with your friends. Now without wasting any more time. Let's begin the story. You sure about this kid it's a long way to Fusha village do you have the cash necessary? A ferryman asked seeing a young black cloaked figure with a large nodashi with a white sheath that had a black dragon inscribed along the side while the hilt was gray with white a royal purple diamond pattern. Yeah I got the money just wake me up when we get there please, he said handing him the berry necessary for the ride as the man assumed from the boy he was no older than eight at the most. Staring at the money he said after a moment of pause, sure kid just get on. Nodding he walked past the large man and leaned against the mast of the ship before putting his lead down. Mom, Dad, Granny, Sis, Gramps I'll make them pay I swear it, he thought to himself taking a tighter grip on the sword in his arms. Oh oh a week later oh oh, kid wake up we're in Fusha village, the cloaked figure heard in making him lift his head to see the ferryman standing over him making him nod. Thanks, Naruto said as he waved goodbye and walked off the ship into the moderate sized village before stretching. Hearing his stomach growl he thought, well I might as well stop by a place to eat before I do anything else. I knew I shouldn't have eaten all my rations in the first few days on the boat. Seeing a bar he smelled food coming from it making him smile softly before nodding to himself before walking towards the smell as his stomach groaned louder every step he took. Oh oh fusha bar oh 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 the entire bar was bustling with joyous laughter and good times as people cheered and drank with one another all of whom were pirates or of local beings of the island one of the more noticeable was a red head with three scars going over his eye with a little girl with unruly black hair wearing a pair of shorts and a sleeveless red shirt and sandals sitting at the bar with him wearing a straw hat that was slightly larger than her head. Hearing the bar doors creak open they saw a young figure walk into the bar as all sounds ceased when they saw him walk to a seat next to the redhead and the little girl. The woman running the bar asked, what can I get for you sweetie? He reached into his pocket cursing before he put what small amount of berry he had left from the ferry and said, can I get something to eat with this? It's all I got left ma'am. She nodded taking it from him before stopping as she said, also sweetie you're going to have to remove your hood it's rude when talking to people who can't see your face. He nodded as he reluctantly removed his hood showing long red hair with a black center flared out in swirls along his hair with it being spiky as his hair reached the middle of his back with his bangs framing his face while one covered his eye which were covered by a black cloth and two bone like protrusions coming from his forehead. On his cheeks were three whisker marks with two fangs peeking from his upper lip. The bartender returned with his meal saying, here you go kid enjoy if you're still hungry we got more in the back. He nodded with a small smile before digging in with appreciation before he heard, you know kid you should hand over that sword before you hurt yourself. Seeing a large hand land on the sheath the man yelled gathering everyone's attention seeing a tri-pronged kanai burying itself to the hilt in his wrist. The boy said in a harsh voice, you know one would think you were taught better to keep your hands to yourself also you might want to hurry if you're lucky you might get to keep your hand with minor use at the least worst case scenario you lose it completely. The redhead seeing the sword asked, hey kid where did you get that sword? Turning he said, it's one of the last thing I've got to remember my mom after she and the rest of my family and continent were killed by marines and people my family and I thought we could trust. What's your name kid? The redhead asked getting a twitch to form on the younger redhead's eyebrow. My name ain't kid you scar faced her and ain't it customary to introduce yourself before asking for their name? The boy asked making the entire crowd present to stare at him in shock. The redhead stared at him blankly for a moment before he erupted into laughter saying, you got moxie kid and I suppose you're right my name is Shanks you are? My name is Uzumaki Uchiha Senju and Naruto son of Senju and Minato and Uzumaki Uchiha and Kashina from the elemental islands, Naruto said introducing himself making Shanks eyes widen. Wait did you say Kashina? You're my little sister's son? What happened to her? He asked getting a sad expression from his nephew. S she. Dad and the others of our nation were killed by people we thought were friends in addition with a few marine admirals, they came to the village wanting to add to their ranks and asked the strongest of the nation they refused and were betrayed by people who we thought were our family only for the sake of more power, he said clenching his fists till the knuckles turned white. Granny Tsunade and Grandpa Dan hid me away in a secret room only they and my parents knew about and when I came out after waiting I found all of them dead with a note written in blood by my mom's hand telling me to collect everything in the village, the weapons, 
techniques and other important goods and leave after claiming my birthright, he said making Shanks put his head down. So if I had to guess you having your eyes covered is a sign of you having those eyes along with eating that fruit correct? He asked getting a nod all the while everyone sat listening to the tale wondering what he meant. Fortunately for them the little girl next to the two asked for them, hey Shanks what are you guys talking about? What did he eat and what's so special about his eyes that he has to cover them? Turning to the little girl both looked at each other before Shanks answered, well Luffy Naruto here like myself are from a large island nation where people can perform feats that many thought were limited to people who eat devil fruits the use of elements and such being one of them. She had an amazed expression on her face before turning to Naruto he nodded as Shanks continued, now like you Naruto ate a zone type devil fruit one that is more powerful than any other devil fruit in addition to his eyes making him the most powerful person alive when he reaches maturity since only one person before him has ever had both powers which was thousands of years ago before pirates were ever known of. Pointing to Naruto's eyes he said, now his eyes allow him to copy abilities and powers of other devil fruits to a limit like manipulation of the body like your fruit can't be copied in other techniques of our island's abilities. Now his fruit is called the Ryu Ryu Kami no Mi, Dragon Dragon God Fruit, making him a dragon man and capable of adapting to anything that comes his way making him next to impossible to defeat especially with water being a common issue for other devil fruits users is but a minor annoyance to him. Naruto removed his blinder showing his eyes were metallic purple color with six rings going from the pupil out with several tomo on each ring. Turning to Naruto he said, now I suppose you want to get revenge on the people who killed your village and friends right? To Shanks and everyone's surprise he said, to be honest I honestly don't care about revenge I just want them to pay for what they've done for the innocent lives they've taken and the people they've betrayed. If they die before I can be the one to do so, fine it's no skin off my teeth but that doesn't mean I'd be happy about it. My family taught me that obsessing over revenge is a horrible thing and will lead to a terrible path if I get the chance I'll take it if not then fine. Then why don't you join my crew, Luffy said with excitement making Naruto raise an eyebrow at her when everyone else started to laugh making the girl's face turn red. Quit laughing at me I'm telling you I'm going to be king of the pirates just you all watch, she yelled making everyone laugh harder as she started to form tears in her eyes. Shanks sighed saying to Naruto. Don't mind her she's always had mile high dreams I promised her when she formed her own crew and got stronger I'd face her but I think she's dreaming a bit too big. I don't see anything wrong with it, in fact I'd be willing to put my pride on the line saying Luffy does what everyone dreams of doing and actually succeeds where thousands thus far have failed, he said loud enough for everyone to hear making them turn to him. I mean on my island my great great grandfather's dream was to unite the five nations the island was comprised of into a bond of unity which many laughed at and ridiculed him for being some crazy dreamer and yet he pulled it off with effort and conviction, he said turning to Luffy who stared at him. If she says she's going to be king of the pirates and find one piece then I say she's going to do it. I'm willing to put my pride at stake to say to everyone here Luffy Chan will do it, although Luffy Chan you mean to say queen of the pirates since king is a term for men by the way. Naruto says before gaining a fox-like smile on his face not noticing her blush. So captain I hope you work hard because I don't work for someone who can't handle themselves in a make or break situation. Naruto said with a fanged grin making her nod with enthusiasm. Just you watch I'm going to be the greatest pirate ever, she said making him nod as he sat on the stool with the bartender giving him another helping. Tell me Naruto how far are you in the training your parents put you through? Shanks asked making him pause with him in mid-bite. Well my ninjutsu is above cage especially with my reserves and the abuse of shadow clones, they taught me several hand to hand styles and my skills in each are above sanin, I was taught my mother's sword styles and she helped me create a few of my own with high mastery in each with enough practice. With fuinjutsu I'm a seal master and even recreated my father's hiraishin and mastered the abilities of my eyes to an extent which will improve with time, he said making shanks nod. You're just like your father a special type of prodigy, what about medicine and poisons and such? he asked getting a so-so motion. I'm adequate to the point I can handle cuts, burns, breaks and such but serious deals are still out of my lead. For poisons I can do practically anything with the right herbs and other necessities, he stated getting a nod. What about hockey which do you have? the elder redhead asked getting a contemplative expression from Naruto. Well mom said I have a king, armament and observation hockey although they suspect that if I can use all three then I have use of the first dragon fruit users use of what they called the kami's hockey, he explained getting a nod. I have read about her using it but nobody else in the world have been able to perform that hockey let alone use all three at once, Shanks commented as Luffy stared confused. What's hockey? 
she asked making Naruto and Shanks sigh knowing things were going to be an interesting time with her around. Oh oh 11 years later oh oh. I take my eyes of that woman for a moment and she inadvertently gets shipped onto a cruise ship why? Why Kami why is it I have to handle these things? Whenever Luffy is involved I hope dad and grandpa Madara. Didn't have to deal with this although I can't blame. Her sleeping in this thing in open weather is far from comfortable. A 19 year old youth said out loud wearing a pair of black shinobi sandals with storm gray hakama covering his legs with him wearing a black sleeveless kimono top drawn closed with a black sleeveless hooded haori with sapphire blue flames licking the bottom and the hood with dragon god written in kanji on the back wearing a pair of black arm guards that went from his forearms to his upper biceps on his left hip he carried his mother's nodashi muramasa while on his right he carried several other swords carried in scrolls on his hip that he created with his practice of his family unique energy wiping one of his bangs from his eye as his hair was now at his waist before looking further out to see he said of course they had to leave early in the day too i'm lucky i know luffy chan's scent otherwise this would be a hassle continuing his rowing he paused before slapping his forehead before creating a clone saying Use our wind chakra to propel us towards the ship and stay nearby out of sight until we're about to get off. The clone nodded standing as it used a burst of wind chakra to send them off flying. Oh oh cruise ship oh oh, ah wine if I bring this to Lady Alvida I bet she'll be happy. A young boy said tipping the barrel over before struggling to roll it out of the room it was stored. Geez Kobe you coward are you hiding and doing nothing as usual, one of the pirates said before the boy shook his head. N no I was going to bring this wine to Lady Alvida, he said getting a chuckle from the three blocking the door. Then let us lighten your load we could use a drink with how hot it is and take it to the deck. The tallest of the three said as the young boy grew frightened. N N no way if Alvida knows she'll kill you, he said making the three laugh as the more portly of the three grabbed the boy by the collar of his shirt. That's why you're going to keep your mouth shut right, he said making the boy nod in affirmation before he was tossed against the wall. Whimpering he watched the three walk out of the room before seeing a large supply of preserved goods and other things he could take back not noticing the head of orange hair sneak past the room. Oh oh by the pirate ship oh oh, hem the cruise ship is ransacked so the only guess I can go with is that she's up there, and it's a pirate ship at that. Oh well something is better than nothing I suppose since you can't go through life without cracking a few eggs he thought to himself as he jumped up onto the side of the ship using his chakra to stick to the side as he causally walked up the side. Seeing a large heavy set woman with a crew and a young man carrying food onto the ship he said getting their attention, excuse me if could just borrow a moment of your time. Who are you brat? One of the larger set men said getting in Naruto's face before he walked around him to the woman with the pirate hat. As I was saying before I was rudely interrupted I wanted to borrow a bit of your time, you see ma'am my friend and I were at the island nearby stocking up on supplies and to our misfortune or more so my own she ended up falling asleep in the cargo of the cruise ship you just hijacked he said with an awkward chuckle. Maybe if you take off the blinder and remove the hood we can talk, she said getting a shrug from him as he pulled down his hood letting his now waist length hair fall freely while taking off the blinders showing royal purple eyes that swam with ice blue flecks in them while showing he had a lean feminine appeal to him with his lean swimmer's body. Alvida looked him up and down before nodding saying, very well now what was it you were saying? He nodded back saying, Yes you see my friend is a bit of a scatterbrain and when we landed on the island the cruise ship was docked that she fell asleep in their cargo while they were loading it onto their ship. I believe she might be in the loot you plundered from them not too recently. If you'd be so kind as to let me get her I'd appreciate it. She nodded when three of her crewmates tried to open up a wine barrel when a girl burst from the barrel knocking the one who tried to smash it open out like a light. Man what a nice nap. She said drawing everyone's attention seeing she looked to be only a year younger than Naruto with untamed neck length black hair wearing a red sleeveless vest buttoned up to bellow her s with a black tube top showing covering her d cup s with a stitch scar under her eye with her straw hat on her head. Seeing this Naruto sighed audibly before disappearing and reappeared behind her causing a shadow to cast over her making her sit stock still. Lu ffy chan, what did I tell you about staying in sight and causing trouble? Naruto said in a hushed tone making her shiver at the growl in his voice. Turning she saw the predatory glint in his eyes making her shiver one more time before saying, T to always stay in sight and it's bad to cause trouble for others unless it's deserved? After a moment the only response she got was a pad to the head making her close her eyes in content feeling his hand on her head when he knocked her hat off her head causing it to catch on her neck thanks to the thick string he attached to it. Helping her get out of the barrel showing she wore a pair of denim short shorts and sandals he said to Alvida. 
I do apologize about that seeing as I have my friend here we'll just be getting out of your way. Not so fast you too, she said making the two stop as they were at the side of the boat as they turned to her. Yes, Naruto and Luffy said together curious as she raised her club at Naruto. The girl can leave but the cutie stays. Someone so physically fit and handsome shouldn't be roaming the sea on his own with some scrawny weakling, she said making Naruto turn to Luffy who shook her head. Sorry but we really must get going and head to the next island, she said moving her head to the side dodging an arrow as it embedded itself into the rails. You should be h-o-n-n-o-r-e-d to serve the beautiful lady Alvida. Take them, one of the goons said making Naruto sigh as he turned to Luffy gesturing to the kid as she got the idea running towards him as she grabbed him before jumping overboard and landed on the small boat the clone was still piloting staying nearby. I don't suppose you could let me and my friends leave do you? He asked getting a negative making him sigh before drawing the nodashi showing an intricate red Chinese dragon along the flat of the blade. I guess I have no choice in the matter, Naruto said getting into a stance watching the pirates surround him while Alvida stood to the side watching. Seeing a small group come charging from all sides he quickly flipped his sword till it was in a reverse grip before spinning around hitting them all knocking many of them overboard. Stopping for a second he vanished in a burst before appearing between groups knocking many of them out making Alvida watch wide-eyed. That movement, she said shocked when one of her crewmates tumbled next to her. H he's a monster, the battered crewmate said before fainting out of fear as he swept away the rest with the sheath of the sword making her braced herself while batting away one of her own as he flew at her. Turning to Alvida he said, so can we go or must I fight you as well? She shook her head saying, no chance boy your friend left with my cabin boy and with your skills I can take on even the strongest of the pirates out there. He shrugged getting in the stance again saying, well at least you have conviction and persistence if nothing else. She cackled before coming at Naruto with her club raised as Naruto ducked under the first swing before jumping over the horizontal swing aimed at his torso before be forced himself to land on the club causing it to crash to the deck of the ship. I win he said focusing his chakra into his palm before hitting her in the stomach launching her over the edge of her ship and skipped across the water before sinking. Looking over the edge he saw Luffy and the kid on their small boat as he jumped down and landed on the leftover space of the vessel filled with four before it was reduced to three. Well then shall we get a move on, it won't be long before her crew gets back up and gets their captain from the water and we have that long to make it out of their sight, Naruto said getting a nod from the two. So how long until we reach the closest island if we hurry? Luffy asked getting a contemplative look from Naruto. Shrugging he said standing up he had Kobe take his space before focusing more wind chakra before he pushed them off towards the next island. So why don't you tell us about yourself kid? Naruto said getting a timid nod from the young boy. We'll start off the cutie piloting the boat as my boyfriend, fiance Uzumaki Uchiha Senju and Naruto and the first member of my pirate crew she said with a large smile as Naruto tapped the kid's shoulder. And the overly smiley teenager is my fiancé, girlfriend Monkey D. Luffy and my captain, once we can get a proper boat and a good crew going that is but for now it's just our lonesome twosome with her dream being queen of the pirates, he said making the boy go wide-eyed before he started going off until Luffy bopped her on the head. Holding his head he said in obvious pain from the blow, why did you do that? She shrugged saying, just because, he sighed saying, well I'm used to it anyway so it's fine. Standing Luffy said, it's not if it's impossible or not. Getting the young kid's attention he looked up at her as she took her hat off holding onto it as she looked down saying, I do it because I want to. I decided to become queen of the pirates, if I die fighting for it then fine if that's what it takes to stand at the top. He then turned to Naruto who said, my dream is to bring the people who killed my family to justice. I'm not obsessed with revenge or anything so if they die before I get my chance then it's fine. Also someone's got to keep this scatter brain in check before she runs off doing something stupid. Hey, Luffy said in indignation making Naruto turn to her silently for a moment as he continued to guide the boat with his wind chakra. Small lake, he said simply making her drop her head a bit making the kid look at Naruto in confusion. Aggravated wild tiger, giant aggravated wild tiger giant aggravated overly protective wild mother tiger, he added making a sweat drop form on the back of both the boy and girl's head. And let's not forget the not too recent wine barrel fiasco, he said causing that single drop to grow in size causing the kid to stare at the two in wonder. I think I might have been better off with that abusive battle axe, he thought as he stared at the two continued their moment. Thinking back on what the two said he thought, can I do it too? Not afraid to die, 
He whispered loud enough to get their attention as the two stopped their moment to listen. Maybe I could join the Marines, he said causing Luffy to look towards Naruto who stared at him stoically. The Marines huh? Naruto said getting an eager nod. That's right joining the Marines is my dream, to go out and catch bad guys it's been my dream ever since I was a kid do you think I could do it? He asked making Naruto shrug. I wouldn't know the Marines aren't my all time favorite people in the world and nobody will know unless you make the effort to do so of course unless you could see the future, Naruto said getting a determined nod from the young man. Yeah I'll definitely do it, he said making Naruto create a clone do his job guiding the boat while he sat in silence thinking, join the Marines huh? By the way just, what are you two anyway? You two don't seem normal at all in any way, he said with a curious undertone before his eyes bulged out seeing Naruto's arms grow scales with sharp nails and claws before a forked tongue slid out of his mouth while Luffy pulled her cheek making it stretch. I'm a rubber woman and ate the gomu gomu no mi, gum gum fruit, Luffy said with a grin. And I'm a dragon man or as the name of my fruit suggests the Ryu Ryu Kami no mi, dragon dragon god fruit. I'm a dragon god he said before changing back while Luffy let go of her cheek causing it to return to place with a snap. So you're both looking to reach the Grand Line otherwise known as the Graveyard of Pirates? Kobe asked getting a nod from the two as they looked at him in wonder trying to understand where he was going with this. Yeah that's why we're looking to make a strong crew, I heard there's a pirate hunter around here, what type of guy is he? Luffy asked. You mean Zoro? Last I heard he was captured by the marines, he said making Naruto's eyes widen at the name. So he's weak then? She said getting a loud negative. No, he's a terrifying beast, he said before realizing Luffy's questions. Why are you asking me this? He asked getting a large grin from the rubber woman. Nothing I was just curious on if he was a nice guy, I thought maybe he'd like to join my crew, she said making Naruto shake his head. You're going to do something reckless again aren't you? Naruto asked getting a chuckle from the girl. Who knows maybe he's a nice guy. She said laughing making Naruto and Kobe stare at her. Sighing Naruto said, I don't think now's the time to be laughing Luffy Chan. Kobe nodded saying, I agree with him he's being held by the marines. Speaking of which shouldn't we be reaching the island with the marine base at this rate? Luffy asked getting a nod from the boy. Yeah we'll reach them quicker if Naruto powers up whatever he's doing to make the boat move this fast. He said looking at the red and black haired youth nod pushing more chakra into his technique pushing them forward faster. Although the two of you might want to be careful since Roronoa Zoro is known to hold distaste for pirates thus his life as a pirate hunter and one to be feared at that. Kobe said making Luffy look at him curiously. What's he like? She asked getting a grim look from the kid. From what Alvida and any pirate in the sea knows he's said to be a hungry beast hungry for blood and bounty. She's frightening to say the least and many say he's a demon in a human's body. He says with a shiver making Naruto raise an eyebrow. He can't really be that bad but a kenjutsu user could be useful in our group since I'm the only one who has any sword skill excluding Luffy Chan here who's still learning how to use a sword. Naruto said causing the rubber girl to stick her tongue out before it extended with a chuckle. It's not my fault that practically every type of sword we've come across hasn't felt right for me. She said getting a chuckle as they settled into a moment of peace. Oh, oh hours later oh oh, we're finally here the island where the marines are, Luffy said as Naruto wrapped the rope before he and Kobe stood next to her. Seems like a nice island town but we're just seeing the cover I'll hold my judgment for when I see how things are on a more serious level here, Naruto said popping his back making Kobe look at Naruto as he stared at the marine base with a glare causing the bespectacled boy to grow nervous. You um Luffy why does Naruto not like the marines? He asked making the straw hat wearing woman to look down at him as she turned to focus to Naruto. The marines made an offer for his family to join the marines because of their record as two of the most well known beings with a bounty and for their skills which Naruto inherited, several offers were made and several times they refused some of the generals came and asked one last time only for his family to decline, she said making her hang her head. What did they do to make him not like the marines Kobe thought to himself. Kid I don't have anything against all marines just those who abuse their power and those who feel just because they are the law they can push their way onto others who are fine as they are. I'm the result of them pushing their way onto others, Naruto said as he looked at the young kid. What did they do? Kobe asked seeing Naruto's eyes darken he honestly didn't know if he wanted the answer to his question or not. Not taking his consideration into account Naruto said, 
My mom hid me away in the safe house of our compound while they fought off the generals only for them to be betrayed by people we thought were family. Not only did they kill my family but they also killed my entire continent as everyone else refused to the offer leaving as the sole survivor of that continent. Understand this Kobe I don't hate all marines actually your dream is admiral and I can tell that if you were to put even half the conviction you have into your dream I know you'll rise the ranks pretty well and pretty fast. Just know this power corrupts and absolute power corrupts absolutely, Naruto said before all three of their stomachs roared causing them to blush. Come on we can go get a bite to eat and plan from there I'm starving I knew we should have grabbed some of Alvita's food, Naruto said holding his stomach. Walking forward Luffy said following him, and we can stop by the base to get Kobe into the marines too. It kill two birds with one stone deal right? BB but I'm not ready I heard Captain Morgan runs this base, Kobe said causing the people in the immediate area to spread out hiding making them raise an eyebrow. Seems Zoro isn't the only name that's taboo around here. Naruto said getting a nod from Luffy and Kobe. I can understand Zoro but why would they act that way towards the captain? He said with a question mark over his head. As I said Kobe everything seems nice on the cover but what's inside the book is the truth it seems everyone here is afraid of the marines here like many islands as they abuse their authority and power or just the captain, he said as he saw more people shook. I'm guessing it's a bit of both most likely people who stood up against them were punished severely to make the others obedient so they don't try to stand up to the marines. Naruto finished seeing the sad look in many of their eyes. Oh oh marine base oh oh. Wow as if the large building wasn't obvious enough the steel bolted double doors should help making their location obvious, Naruto said as he looked down at the kid who was wiping tears from his eyes. We're finally here this is where we part ways Naruto, Luffy even though our time was short all. He started when Naruto tapped his shoulder getting his attention before pointing to Luffy who was attempting to climb the wall. Alarmed he said, ah, Luffy www what do you think you're doing? Why I'm looking for the demon of course I want him to join my crew, she said with a grin as she placed a hand above her eyes blocking out the sun letting her see better. I honestly doubt he'd be kept out in the open someone like him would most likely be kept deep in the base in the prison cells with other. He started as she cut him off coming down. I saw him. She said running past Naruto and Kobe who both were sporting sweat drop before they followed after her as he picked Kobe up and stood on the wall with the kid on his shoulders. Ha huh, if it isn't Zoro chan I haven't seen her since mom and I went to an old friend of hers to help me in Kenjutsu. He said making the kid and Luffy look at him in confusion. Um Naruto do you mean to say Zoro isn't a guy? She asked getting a positive as he sighed. Zoro chan is a girl but she is a lot like my mom a tomboy of the utmost extreme. She set a marriage agreement between me and her when we were kids with how well we hit it off and we ultimately agreed. Remember I told you about her and the other agreements mom and dad set up when they were roaming around. He said getting a contemplative look from the rubber girl. So if we untie the rope she can escape and join our crew right? She said getting a shrug from Naruto. It's likely although she is known to be stuck in her ways at times if she's stuck in trap with her being talked into things and it would take a lot to get her to change her mind when it's set, he explained. Hey you three. They heard making them turn to see the tied woman wearing black pants with a green tint to them and white shirt with a green sash and black bandana wrapped around her head. You're bothering me so get lost, she said looking up showing she had a lean face with narrow brown eyes before Naruto noticed a ladder be placed next to them as a little girl appeared peeking her head over the top of the wall. Whatever Kobe had to say died in his throat when the little girl turned to the three of them before shushing them unconsciously making them nod which made her smile before she handed Naruto a end of rope she was carrying before she repelled down the side. How did this happen exactly where I'm helping a kid act like some ninja? A better question is how she could carry such a large ladder on her own. What is she doing? Naruto thought to himself as he watched her run across the barren yard. Naruto cut Kobe off as he said, don't worry your pretty little head Kobe if there is one thing you don't have to worry about with Zoro Chan is that she would rather die than to bring harm to a child. Oh oh with Zoro oh oh. Are you hungry ne Chan? Even though this is my first time I made you some onigiri. The little girl said ignoring Zoro's comment about her getting killed. I told you I'm not hungry now get out of here before you get hurt alright. She said making the girl get a little sad making Zoro think sorry sweetie but if you got hurt I couldn't forgive myself take the hint. Before the kid could say anything the five heard, you're still energetic I see Roronoa Zoro and didn't your parents teach you better than to be mean to children? The man had the look of an overly privileged brat who got whatever he wanted due to his connections since he could form a sentence possibly even before that while he was escorted by two marine guards holding flintlock rifles. Oh oh with Naruto and the others oh oh, 
I'll play us every berry I've got that says he's Morgan I can already tell he's the garbage type, Naruto said as Kobe said something about the girl being safe now that the marines were around while Naruto thought differently. The man grabbed one of the girl's onigiri and ate it before he spat it out as he yelled at her. Bah! It's full of sugar, onigiri needs salt, salt. The others couldn't hear the little girl's comment but knew he didn't like it as he slapped it out of her hand before stomping on it in front of the little girl making her flinch from every stomp on her hard work. Bastard, Naruto growled as he heard what he said about anyone helping criminals will be executed before he raised an eyebrow. So I was right he's just some overly privileged brat relying on daddy to get his way, Naruto growled as his hair spiked up on end. They heard him tell one of the less than reluctant guards to toss the little girl over the wall which he seemed against before he relented when Naruto heard him whisper an apology before tossing her over which he was thankful for him and Kobe standing just in the shadow of a tree making it difficult to see them from that far. Seeing the girl fly Luffy reacted stretching her arm as she secured the little girl using her body as a cushion for the child while Naruto and Kobe ran to them. Luffy you too okay? Naruto asked getting a nod from Luffy while the little girl looked down at her bloody knee making him crouch while the little girl flinched back. It's okay he's not going to hurt you, Luffy said making her relent allowing Naruto to work his magic as his hands gave off a faint green glow while he applied it to the injury making it heal before their eyes. That's amazing Naruto how did you do that, Kobe asked getting a fanged grin from Naruto. I'm a ninja after all medical ninjutsu is a mediocre skill of mine. Scrapes, cuts, bruises, and fractured bones and poisons are my specialty anything beyond that you're on your own from that point since I didn't get to finish training before that, Naruto said as he finished healing the injury he helped her up. How could he do such a thing? Kobe said as they turned to see Luffy was nowhere to be seen as Naruto sighed. Luffy I hope you know what you're doing, Naruto sighed with Naruto and the others sitting by a tree. Oh oh with Luffy oh oh, so you're a bad guy? Luffy said standing across from Zoro who got a glare from her. And you're still here so what? Zoro asked leaning against the wooden cross as she stared at Luffy. Luffy stared at Zoro before asking, being publicly humiliated, are you really strong? She asked as Zoro's withered glare grew stronger. Mind your own business. She barked watching Luffy walk forward until she stopped right in front of the swordswoman. I mean if I were you I'd escape in three days, Luffy said with a grin as Zoro scoffed. I'm nothing like you I intend on surviving to the end, she said with a determined grin making Luffy give one herself. Chuckling Luffy said, well if anything you're stubborn I'll give you that much well see ya. Turning to walk away Zoro stopped her saying, hold on a second. Giving the swordswoman her attention she gestured down to remains of the onigiri saying, can you get that for me? You really want to eat this I mean nobody knows what that guy stepped in and with the dirt it's more of a dirt ball if anything now she complained getting a growl from the bound swordswoman. Oh shut up and give it to me already I'm starving and that kid was nice enough to bring me a meal no matter how bad it is, she said getting a smile from Luffy before she tossed it into her mouth which she choked down on before gagging. Told ya, she said shaking her head before she saw a slight smile form on her dirt covered face. Tell the kid I said, thanks it was really good although she may want to add just a pinch of salt next time she makes onigiri. Zoro said before she went quiet allowing Luffy to walk away. Oh oh at a bar oh oh, really, she liked it? The kid asked as she and the others sat outside. Giving the kid a nod Luffy said, yup at it all with a smile although she said you might want to add just a tiny pinch of salt to balance everything out, just a bit. I wonder is Zoro really as bad a person as they say? Kobe asked getting a negative from the little girl. She's in jail because of this, she said making Naruto and the other turn their attention to her. What do you mean? Naruto asked with a raised eyebrow already getting an idea. Everything is Helmeppo's fault, he's Captain Morgan's son, she started getting a nod from the others as they linked that much together. He brought this dangerous dog into town yelling for everyone to get out of his way many of us moved out of fear of not only the dog but out of fear of being executed, it charged into the bar my mom works at and started terrorizing the people inside eating their food, she said putting her head down. I tried to stop it by grabbing something heavy and swung it at the dog to get it away, he threatened me and my mom as his dog charged at me and I was afraid when Zoro saved me by tossing the bar stool at the dog, she said as Naruto sighed. And I'm going to guess that the brat did something to aggravate Zoro chan and caused her to be in the state she's in now correct? Naruto said getting a nod from her. And let me continue he got cornered after getting beaten by her and he used you and everyone in the bar as leverage to make her back off relying on daddy to save his ass right? 
Naruto said getting another nod. He forced her into making a deal saying if she goes to jail in our stead for a month not only is but she will be let free as well ignoring her crime, she explained getting a weary sigh from Naruto. And that people is Zoro-chan she means well and she'll help a person in need if it means others are safe. Once she sets her mind to something she does it and it's difficult to dissuade her from otherwise, he said rubbing his forehead. It's been weeks so far she has 10 days to go and I've been trying to sneak food in for her as throughout it as my way to apologize since it's my fault she's there in the first place. She said giving a hiccup as she started to cry before Naruto patted her head. Don't blame yourself she would have done it anyways as she can't stand seeing innocent people in trouble. Naruto said patting her head before they heard a ruckus in the bar making them look inside seeing the blonde bastard knock over platters and baskets. Seeing this Naruto lowered his hood as he walked into the bar making eye contact with an orange haired girl sitting near the entrance. Oh and since I'm tired of waiting I decided I'll have that Zoro kill tomorrow, he said as one of his guards poured him a glass of wine making something in both Luffy and Naruto snapped as they charged him as Luffy gave him a punch to the face before Naruto kicked him in the stomach causing him to fly into the wall. Naruto was about to give a kick when Kobe grabbed him when he said, Naruto stop. Please Kobe he's some sniveling piece of shit hiding behind daddy's influence he can't do anything on his own and he's shown that where he can't even keep his word. I dare him to try something with me I'll spill his blood here. Naruto roared showing his sharp fangs as scales began to form on Naruto's body as they started to darken as smoke blew out of his nose. Why you hit me? You dare hit the son of Captain Morgan, he said with tears in his eyes making Naruto scoff. Your point. I don't fear people who hide behind another person's name you little piece of shit, Naruto said. I tell my father and have you executed, he said getting a low growl emit form Naruto's throat. Why don't you man me up and do shit yourself for once, Naruto barked showing his sharp canines. Naruto you don't want to make the marines your enemy please, Kobe said getting a growl in response as Luffy stepped up. I intend on saving Zoro and have her join our crew and this brat isn't getting in our way. Luffy said not noticing the pampered child run away as Naruto and Luffy make their way past the group as they walk back towards the marines. Oh oh prison yard oh oh, you again? I think you have far too much time on your hands you know that? Zoro said lifting her head as she stared at Luffy. I'm going to untie the ropes and you'll join my crew. Luffy said making her eyes widen. Pardon me? She said getting a nod from the soon to be captain. Yeah I'm looking for strong people to join my crew. I already have a jack of all trades who dabbles in medicine, a cook, and a fighter, she said getting a stronger glare. I refuse. You honestly expect me to be a bad guy, she said when she heard. If I were you I'd take her offer after what we heard at the bar, she looked around until she felt a tap on her forehead making her look up staring at a pair of royal purple eyes. Hello Zoro Chan long time no see, he said removing his hood making Zoro's eyes widen at the sight of a familiar head of black and red hair. And Naruto? She said getting a nod as he hopped off the post before standing across from her with Luffy. So do you want to stay tied to a post waiting to die today or be free? He said making her stare at him. What are you talking about Naruto? I have 10 days and I'm free as a bird, she said getting a negative from the two in front of her. Actually Zoro-chan Luffy and I heard the pompous brat talk about how he's going to execute you tomorrow. He had zero intention of keeping his word and of course he's after us now too since Luffy and I beat him senseless, he said making her stare at him. Continuing to stare she finally said, pirates are scum so why are you one, in fact why are you out here in the first place instead of in the elemental islands? Because the marines came wanting to establish power there with them as the law my family refused several times until the marines got tired of it and attacked with four people my parents trusted joining them in the slaughter of the entire land I want to bring an end to those responsible, Naruto said making her eyes widen. Going silent for a bit she said, well even if I wanted to join you I don't have my swords they took them in their base. Is that all? Well Luffy Chan if you can get her untied I can get our lovely swordswoman her weapons and be on our merry way. Naruto said walking into the base while. Besides I already decided that you're joining our crew and that's all there is to it, Luffy said with a grin making Zoro's eyes widen. And who the hell said you can decide for someone else, she roared getting a dismissive wave. Once Naruto gets your swords back you're joining and that's that, Luffy said crossing her arms with finality being evident in her voice while Zoro shook her head. Only Naruto can attract odd women, wait a minute wouldn't that apply to me? she thought to herself before getting into a comfortable silence talking to Luffy. Oh oh with Naruto oh oh, 
Geez could this guy be any more conceited than he already is? I mean photos of himself are littered all over the walls, Naruto said when he bumped into the same orange haired girl from the bar. Well hello Miss Mind explaining why you're looting the marines, Naruto said making her blush as Naruto stared at her with a raised eyebrow. Hello Dreamboat. Wait he's talking to me say something Nami, she thought to herself before saying, sorry but my name is Nami as for why I'm looting the marines is my business CYA. Seeing her run the other way Naruto thought, well she's interesting to say the least and from the maps she had it safe to assume she's a good navigator maybe if we run into her again and get her to hold still for more than 5 seconds we can get her to join. Shaking his head saying, focus Naruto gotta get the swords and best way is to follow her scent. Taking a breath he followed it to a pink room making Naruto sweat drop seeing it would fit a little girl over a grown son of a marine captain before Naruto spotted her three swords resting on a mantle before seeing a large stone statue being hoisted up to the roof across from him. Creating a clone he said, give that to the others I'm going to check out what's going on over there. It nodded before running off to give the swordswoman her swords while Naruto ran off in the different direction. Oh oh marine base rooftops oh oh. Geez this place is almost as big as the town what did he knock out several homes just to build this place? Naruto thought as he grabbed one of his shuriken and focused some wind chakra through it before giving it a toss letting it fly slicing through the rope making the statue fall cracking itself through the torso allowing it to fall off the edge. Walking towards the marines he said sarcastically, he whoops. Seeing a pair of hands stretched to the roof Naruto saw Luffy and Zoro get launched into the air and landed next to him as Helmeppo said, it's you too. Yeah it's us you spoiled rotten little shit I thought I'd finish what I started in the bar along with daddy dearest here. Naruto said drawing his sword causing the grown man to growl with his axe hand raised. Do you intend to start a revolution by going against my laws? Morgan demanded getting an uninterested snort from Naruto. Don't flatter yourself I just hate those who let their power go to their head. I mean seriously you'd execute a child? Even demons are more lenient than you oh well that won't matter since once we're finished with you the people here will be free from your dictatorship, Naruto said getting in his stance as did the others. As skilled as the three of you are to get in here your skill is no match to my power, Morgan said making Naruto turn to the others. Wow is this guy arrogant or what? Naruto asked getting a nod from the other two. So how do we split them up? I count an odd 35 marine goons and a maniac who swapped his hand for an axe and a steel jaw making me believe he's just accident prone, Naruto said making the captain form a twitch on his eyebrow. How about we each get 10 and whoever gets the leftovers gets them? Zoro suggested getting a shrug as they split up with Naruto defeating his 10 in an instant while Luffy and Zoro took their time as they did the same with the remaining 5. So now captain what are you going to do? Naruto said making him growl. How dare you speak that way to me, he said making Naruto dismiss him while he stretched. I dare because you claim to be great while you hide behind your own troops. I mean you can't be as great as you claim to be if all you do is run your mouth while your troops do the work, Naruto said making him charge at them. Need a hand with them? Luffy asked getting a negative as Naruto just walked forward before ducking under Morgan's axe hand before sweeping his legs from under him. Standing Naruto put his palm against the captain's chest while using his other hand to put two fingers against the back of it as he said, Ryuo Atsuriyoku, Dragon King Pressure. A strong pressure formed around them as it launched the captain over the town before he skipped across the water. Turning to one of the more conscious marines he said, Hey there's a kid in town whose dream is to become a strong marine his name is Kobe he'd be wearing a white and blue shirt and he's most likely down at the bar if you head there you'll find him. He stared at Naruto making Naruto's eyebrow twitch before he growled out, well what are you waiting for a pretty please, go. Well shall we get a move on, Naruto said getting a nod from Luffy when Zoro shrugged. Wherever you go I'm going with you so what all do we need for a crew, Zoro asked as they left the marine base. Well we need a navigator, a shipwright, a cook, a doctor, and several fighters, we'll also need a place to forge weapons and a bathhouse for us on the ship, Luffy started getting a groan. Something up? Zoro asked getting a nod from Naruto. When I went to get your swords I came across a woman looting the marine base and she had several maps it's a good guess she was a navigator or someone who knows what she's doing, he said getting both of their attention. Wait you mean you could have found us a navigator and you let her slip through your fingers? Luffy said making Naruto stare at her. Well sorry I figured getting Zoro-chan's swords were of more importance. Besides I know what she looks like. I know her name and I know this isn't the last time we'll see her, he said getting a nod from Zoro. 
I agree with Naruto on this one even though you do attract unnecessary attention, she said making him turn away from her. First that group of pirates were harassing women that's not something I can stand for. Second there was also that man who was abusing a woman and her child I wasn't going to stand by and take it now let's go and get to our tiny little boat, he said walking with his hands in his pocket. He he and you criticize me for my actions, Luffy said making Naruto turn to her. Giant aggravated overly protective mother tiger, he said making her drop her head making Naruto smile counting off in his head, Naruto, 658 Luffy, 2 feet. He still couldn't believe she managed to shut him up twice in the 11 years they knew each other but he was impressed by her wit. Zoro on the other hand walked between the two of them as she said, what the hell are you two talking about, and what's this about a giant aggravated overly protective mother tiger? Nothing to worry about just know that insanity is going to follow our crew quite often so I suggest you be prepared, he said getting a blank look from Zoro. You always attract insanity Naruto so I think I'm plenty prepared, Naruto said as they reached the docks in time to shove off as more marines came running after them. Naruto you need to get this thing moving hurry, Luffy said as Naruto stood up pushing wind chakra through the sail letting them fly across the water. And this was all in a single day rather impressive if I do say so myself, Naruto said as he sat with the others. Is it too late for me to go back to the marine base and remain a prisoner? Zoro asked getting a nod from the two devil fruit users making her hang her head. Luffy Chan what did I tell you? Naruto said with a twitching eyebrow holding an empty canvas burlap bag that was once filled with food. You said I could have a snack, she said with an innocent expression while Naruto's eye twitched. I said a snack and yet you ate everything in the bag, I'm surprised you didn't eat that, he said before he saw teeth marks on it before turning to Luffy who whistled innocently. I wanted to know what it tastes like, it kind of tastes like burnt cardboard, besides we're out at sea what's wrong with us catching something and cooking it up, she said standing before looking up to see a seagull flying high overhead making the two with her to look up as well. Um not to burst your bubble or anything but you do know practically everything in the world is bigger than us right? I'm surprised we didn't get eaten by a fish for as long as we've been out at sea, Zoro said opening an eye looking at the dark haired teen. Zoro chans right Luffy and even if that thing was small enough to catch where are we going to cook it? We're in the middle of the ocean and the only kindling we have is what we're currently using to stay afloat, Naruto added before Luffy's arms shot up to the sky with her body following behind and was soon caught in the giant bird's mouth. Do you deal with this often? Zoro asked getting a whimper from Naruto. Too often for my taste, can you keep an eye for the bird while I drive? It's a bit of a pain to do both, Naruto said getting a nod from the green haired girl as Naruto used his wind chakra to launch them as they sped off. Hey! Stop the boat! The two heard as they looked over to see three drifters. We can't stop the boat, just grab on as we pass by, Zoro exclaimed as the three had worried looks before they passed by when they gripped the edge before they pulled themselves on board. Now stop the boat! We work for the great Captain Buggy and we'll be taking this boat, the only sword carrying pirate said before getting a dark glare from the two. You are huh? Naruto and Zoro said together before they beat the three senseless resulting in the three sitting by the oars. You two get rowing and you if one of them gets tired you take over for them, Naruto ordered as he continued to use his wind chakra to launch them. We had no idea you two were the great pirate hunter Roronoa Zoro and dragon god Naruto. Do please forgive us for our folly, the man in the middle said as the two snorted looking to the sky. Apologize as you row otherwise you're back to swimming to shore and I doubt you'll make it far because of you three we lost our captain but if I know Luffy Chan and I do she'll be fine when she reaches land, Naruto said as he continued to push them. Aniki what are we going to do? The larger set man said to the man in the middle who shivered. I don't know but when Captain Buggy finds out that an orange haired girl took our boat filled with treasure he's going to kill us he said making Naruto and Zoro turn to each other. This orange haired girl what exactly did she look like? Naruto asked as the three looked at each other before they turned to Zoro. Either you answer him or you find yourself swimming to shore, she said getting a nod from the three. She was about both of your height with short orange hair and brown eyes, she was kind of pale wearing a short orange skirt with three circles along the side with a white and blue striped shirt on, he said making Zoro turn to Naruto. Was that the girl you ran into while you were finding my swords as she was raiding the marine base? She asked getting a nod from him. Yeah although the clothes were different but she did have a hint of mischief in her eyes and if the only place close to land holds this captain buggy then it's safe to assume she'll be robbing him as well and our scatterbrained captain will be there too, 
Naruto said as he turned to the three with his eyes gaining a predatory look as they narrowed. Where is your captain located? Naruto demanded with a growl making them sweat as he started to form scales on his body with smoke billowing out of his nose. I'd answer if I were you we've been on this tiny little boat for a while and out of rations. With him being a dragon he's willing to eat people and I'm just about willing to join him. Zoro said getting a whimper from the three before a foul smell hit their noses making them look down to see the three peed himself. Ichi stays on that town up ahead you can't miss it but the people all but left after we came. The man in the middle said with a guy with dark orange brown hair nodding before Naruto nodded until Naruto tossed them off and speed off. I still can't believe they pissed themselves, Naruto groaned before he exhaled a small stream of fire to dry off the piss stain. Wouldn't you in their position? I mean they're staring down a man who can turn into a dragon and a swordswoman known to either kill pirates or turn them in. I'd be afraid if I were them, she said getting a chuckle from the man before he started to change back. I got a question Naruto if you can make wood with chakra and it's stronger than any type of wood, why haven't you used it to make a boat or even make enough trees to make one yourself? She asked getting a nod from Naruto. Well that's a good question and the answer for that is because I don't know the absolute makings of a boat. Despite it being made of wood I would have to know each piece made out of it, and then I had to make the tree light enough for the material to let it stay afloat and then we have to factor in the several crew members that will join in the future along with plumbing and facilities. That's too much effort to do without the proper knowledge to do so. Naruto said getting a nod from the green haired girl seeing his logic. So if you could study a large enough ship you'd be able to make one or make one with the wood necessary? She asked getting a so-so motion with his hand. Well it's a yes and a no yes because I would understand how the ship floats without sinking and stops the wood from absorbing the water making the boat sink. While also no because I would still have to get the means necessary to involve a kitchen, bathing area, smiting area to make weapons, the rooms with their own bathrooms of course with fuinjutsu I could make the ship a standard size other pirates have their own but the inside would be larger for our vast potential crew. Naruto said scratching his head before the two saw the land. Let's dock and take a look around if we're lucky we can get Luffy and this orange haired girl to join our crew. Kami knows we need a decent navigator, he said as the two stepped onto the dock. So any idea where our captain might be? Zoro asked before turning to Naruto who had veins bulging from the side of his eyes before they turned a pale pupil less purple color before they expanded. What is that? Zoro asked herself as she saw him look around before snapping his head to the side making her follow his line of sight before the veins vanished. Well our captain is nowhere to be seen but I can find our dear navigator friend, Naruto said getting a nod from Zoro as the two ran before bumping into their target when the two looked down to see the orange haired girl from earlier. This is the second time I ran into something hard who, she thought before looking up to see a familiar pair of royal purple eyes making her blush. You know Nami Chan we have got to stop meeting like this and it would seem that you in a bit of trouble. How about you rest and we can chat after we deal with them nay? He said getting a flustered nod from her as three goons wearing clown attire chased her. Seems like we found the thief and her partners. We're taking you to our captain, the first said as the three tried to advance threateningly before Naruto turned to Zoro who shrugged before taking a step back next to Nami. There wouldn't happen to be a chance for you three to just leave us alone would there? He said getting a nod from them making him drop his head before his eyes opened again to show a cold royal purple colored eyes with the blue wisps growing larger. Then you leave me with no choice, he said drawing his sword getting into a stance. Hidden Mitsurugi Ryu. Ryusosen, flying heaven govern sword style. Dragon nest flash, he said as the three charged at him before swinging his sword to deliver a flurry of strikes at his opponents making them fall to the ground dead before he flicked the blood off his sword placing it back in his sheath. W what the hell was that? Nami asked looking at the moss green haired girl next to her hoping for an explanation. The hidden Mitsurugi Ryu or as it's translated the flying heaven govern sword style. An ancient sword style invented by his ancestor thousands of years ago that allows the user to defeat numerous foes single handedly. Practitioners of this style use a combination of near superhuman speed and agility. She explained as Naruto turned back to them with a grin. Now how about you explain Orenji Tenshi, Orange Angel, he said getting a nod from the orange haired girl who had a brighter blush on her face as she led them away. You sure do know how to attract women Naruto. Thinking on adding her to our merry little group? Zoro whispered getting a shrug. It's her decision after everything is explained. Right now I'd rather focus on getting her to join our crew he said as they were lead into an empty home. 
You already know who I am but for your friend's knowledge I'm Nami a thief who specializes in stealing from pirates nice to meet you too, she said getting a nod from Zoro who was leaning back in her seat. Name's Roranoa Zoro former pirate hunter and now I'm traveling with this red and black haired nut, she said jabbing a thumb at Naruto who sniffed. I'm Uzumaki Uchiha Senju and Naruto a ninja of the elemental continent and a jack of all trades with my specialties being in combat, smithing, and poisons, he said getting wide-eyed expression from Nami. Wait you're the Ryu Kami, Dragon God, with a 90 million dollars berry bounty on your head. Why are you two out here? She said as the two sighed. Well our captain ended up getting eaten by a bird and I can sense her on this piece of land. We're looking for here and we're in the need of a good crew comprising of a navigator, a cook, a shipwright, a doctor and several fighters, along with a decent boat before we can get a better one seeing as we came here on a dingy, Naruto explained getting a dark look in Nami's eyes. Why are you pirates? They're scum who only hurt people, she asked shaking in anger getting a nod from the two. We won't deny it there are a large portion of pirates out there who only cause pain to others, but not all pirates out there are alike. In fact pirates can be split into two factions. He said grabbing a salt shaker and spilled salt across the table making a line before grabbing a couple pieces of bread and fruit and put them on different sides. On one side we have the pirates who act like garbage who plunder and pillage among other unspeakable acts without remorse and for sick pleasure, he said holding a rotten fruit and putting it on the right side. While there are pirates who just go out to achieve their goals like us, I became a pirate for two reasons to see my captain achieve her dream of becoming queen of the pirates and for my dream of seeing the world and fight the marines after what they did to my continent and people. While Zoro Chan here wants to become the world's greatest swordswoman, Naruto explained getting a nod from the three sword carrying woman. Of course humans are pretty much the same in general there are good humans and there are bad humans. It depends on their actions, we are in need of a navigator and from what I saw when we last meet when you robbed the marine base it shows you know your way around a map. Why don't you stick around and join us as a trail run, if you aren't satisfied you can leave and we'll even give you a couple thousand berry to say thank you for your time. He said getting a contemplative look. I'll join you full time if you tell me what the marines did to make you want to fight them, she said getting a shrug. Fine I've already explained it several times before it doesn't hurt as much as before. The marines wanted to build a base on our continent and they went to the five main lands of power there to ask if they could gain some ninja for their recruits to expand their power. Each of the bases said no and they went about their day just fine but ours the strongest. They pestered us asking time and again to join and time and again we said no, he said stretching causing an audible pop to be heard. They tried buying us by giving us techniques of theirs to learn and we turned them down and they continued to grow angry with us. At the last time three admirals came and asked one last time only to be turned away. My father was the leader of the village at the time and this time they weren't happy, they attacked our village while my parents and grandparents fought them along with close friends we thought we could trust until they turned on us and helped the admirals. An entire continent filled with innocent people were killed while my grandmother hid me, he said drawing a gasp from Nami. They killed everyone? She said getting a nod from him. Everyone I ever knew or cared about just because the marines didn't get what they wanted. My best friends and two girls I saw as surrogate little sisters, he said pulling a picture from his pocket showing it to them. And it was a girl with short eggplant colored hair and pale lavender eyes wearing a yellow kimono with floral patterns. Next to her was another girl with short platinum blonde hair wearing a pair of blue shorts and a purple shirt. Between them with his arms around them was Naruto wearing a black bodysuit with red chaps with a short long sleeved grey hooded jacket that stopped at the top of the ribs. The one on the left is Hinata Hayuga and the one on the right is Ino Yamanaka. They were the first two friends I ever made and they were both like sisters to me, he said with a frown while he gripped the table causing it to crack. Calming down he said, like I said Nami Chan not all pirates and people are bad, yes there are the type like the marines and such but not everyone instantly falls under that category. So why exactly was this guy's crew after you? Zoro asked trying to get over the depressing conversation from earlier. I was stealing their captain's treasure when I found this interesting map when they saw me, she said patting herself down finding that the map wasn't on her. W what the hell happened to my map, that was going to make me rich, she exclaimed getting a cough from Naruto to show he was holding the parchment in his hand drawing a massive blush from her. T that was in my shirt how the hell did you get it, she said covering her chest getting a chuckle from Naruto. Bumping into someone is a classic thief technique. You must learn that a ninja is just like a thief Nami-chan, he said making her reach for it only for him to hold it out of reach. 
Crewmates don't keep secrets from each other Nami-chan so what's so special about this map that's so important? He asked getting a groan from the orange-haired girl. It's supposed to be a map of the Grand Line how Buggy got his hands on it is beyond me. She said before they heard a crash outside the home they were hiding in when Zoro opened the door to reveal Luffy sitting on top of the same bird that flew away with her. Pinching the bridge of his nose Naruto said, Nami-chan this is our Captain Luffy. Luffy-chan meet our new navigator Nami. Wide-eyed Nami exclaimed. How the hell did you bring down that bird? It's bigger and heavier than you. Hee hee what can I say I'm full of surprises and it's great to have you as part of our crew. She said shaking Nami's hand while Nami was sweating. What have I gotten myself into? Although if I get to be around that good looking man I don't mind one bit. She thought to herself as she let go of her new captain's hand. Now we just need to stock up on food supplies and get a decent ship because all four of us aren't going to fit on that small boat we came here on naruto said getting a nod from zoro if you're looking for a large pirate ship buggy has a few ships that i'm sure he'd be willing to loan us if we persuade him nami said getting a raised eyebrow from the three if you got a plan i'm more than willing to hear it luffy said when out of nowhere she pulled out a large length of rope making the three stare at her what she asked making the three point towards the rope where exactly were you hiding that? You don't really have anything to hold anything, the three asked making her blush. S shut up, she exclaimed after she wrapped the three up in the rope. Now follow my plan, she said as she led them to Buggy's base. Oh oh Buggy the clown's base oh oh. You know I kind of expected this, Naruto said loud enough for the group of four to hear as they walked into what appeared to be some kind of circus with pirates dressed as clowns while under a large tent was a man wearing a clown pirate costume with his face painted white with blue hair and red lipstick with a red rubber nose. Their leader Buggy was irate because he sent three members of his crew to catch a thief only for them to not come back when he sent more out to find them only to return and tell him that the three he sent out were dead and in pieces. Buggy knew this wasn't the work of any thief and the work of a professional who knew how to work with a sword. Pulled from his thoughts one of his crew came and said, boss the thief's back and she brought two friends and a prisoner. Walking from the crowd was Nami with Naruto, Zoro and Luffy tied up with rope while Buggy regarded the green and red haired swordsman for a moment he said, well what do we owe this visit? I do apologize about stealing your map. I had a fight with my captain, she said nodding her head towards Luffy and got tired of her shit along with my friends and we were wondering if we could join your crew, Nami said making the pirate captain raise an eyebrow. If you three want to join my crew why do you have the two of them tied up? He asked getting a chuckle from the orange haired girl. Well after I was running from your crew that were chasing me Naruto and Zoro killed the three of them so as a means of a safety measure we agreed to keep the two of them tied up until it was okay, she said getting a nod allowing her to untie them making the two stretch. Who are you anyways? I've sworn I've seen the two of you before, Buggy said getting a sideways glance from the two. Well I can assure you it isn't from a face to face confrontation Buggy-san. I'm Uzumaki Uchiha Senju and Naruto also known as the Dragon God and Zoro-chan as the Pirate Hunter. Naruto said making the pirate do the happy dance. Lucky day two high bounty swordsmen that are known for their skill this calls for a party, he exclaimed making the four sweat drop. This was easier than expected. They thought before Luffy was placed inside a cage as the part commenced the three walked around when Naruto placed a plate inside the cage filled with food for Luffy. You know I've trained you and you're stronger than you look why you don't just break out of the cage is beyond me. Naruto said with Zoro and Nami by Luffy's cage. It's part of the plan remember. We wait and strike if I break out early they'll be on guard, she answered getting a shrug from them. While the party continued Buggy exclaimed while his men cheered drawing confused looks from the crew of four, prepare the Buggy Ball. Buggy Ball? What in the hell is a Buggy Ball? Naruto asked getting a chuckle from one of Buggy's goons nearby. You'll see, he said pointing to a cannon that was lit making the four wonder what's special about it until it exploded releasing what could be compared to a beam destroying a large part of the city. Now that's, interesting. Naruto said with little interest getting a nod from Luffy getting a glare from Buggy and his crew. What's that supposed to mean? With these Buggy balls and my devil fruit I'll conquer the Grand Line. He exclaimed getting a snort from Naruto as he flexed his hand making scales form on his hand while his claws formed swiping at Luffy's cage reducing it to scrap metal. First and foremost I have several attacks that makes your Buggy balls look like a pea shooter by comparison. 
Second is because you're devil fruit if what my uncle Shanks says is true just keeps you from getting cut it doesn't really give you much else other than that and there are other devil fruit users out there with better powers than your own plus your crew really doesn't strike me as the strongest bunch. He said getting a nod from the other more experienced fighters. Plus even if the buggy balls did work it would only be of use out at sea. Your crew aren't exactly the most physically fit so any pirate could handle them in the long run like so. Naruto said nodding to Zoro who drew her swords along with Naruto as they vanished before reappearing in front of their group making the pirates faint. As you can see your crew aren't the strongest crew out there and you aren't even near the grand line if they can't beat even two swordsmen and one devil fruit user, he said getting a growl from Buggy. Did you say your uncle was Shanks? He said getting a nod from Naruto making him growl louder before aiming his cannon at Naruto and the others. Everyone get behind me. Naruto said getting a nod as they stood directly behind him before the cannon fired launching the ball at Naruto who made his arm change color gaining a black tone with red streaks along with his feet making them dig into the ground. Batter up! Naruto exclaimed as he opened his palm to catch the ball before tossing it up until it was directly in front of him as he curled his index finger. Tengoku no Shozoku, heavenly affiliation, Naruto said as he flicked his finger launching the ball back with greater force towards Buggy creating a wider beam destroying everything in its path. What the hell was that? Nami and Zoro exclaimed as the two stared at Naruto with wide eyes getting a chuckle from Naruto. Tengoku no Shozoku a technique my grandmother created with her Herculean strength to launch things or people away with a flick of a finger, trust me by experience you don't want to be on the receiving end, he said stretching his arms before turning to Nami. So care to lead us to a ship? He said getting a nod from the orange haired thief. Great we get a navigator and a real ship. Now we just need a cook, a shipwright, a doctor and several highly skilled fighters and we have a crew. Luffy exclaimed jumping up and down in joy. Our happy little family is growing ever larger. Naruto said scratching his head as Nami lead the way for them to their borrowed ship with their recently restocked supplies the end. Now we will see you in the next video.